Third reading is taken from the book of Colossians. And I'll be reading from chapter 2, beginning at verse 6 and concluding with verse 15. Listen, 2 and 4, the word of God. As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespass and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time together. I pray that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, and they would be acceptable to you, O Christ, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. We pray, amen. This morning I want to talk with us about the significance of being a meaning maker in life. Each of our texts this morning, from Hosea, from Luke, and from Colossians, does more than say your life matters. It says that who you are in Christ, you are a meaning maker. Your existence is a meaning maker. And so I want us to think through what that looks like. You know, there are pow- there's power in our names, and I don't think culturally we spend as much time thinking about the names of our children other than we want them to be unique and, you know, does it sound right? But uh, I remember uh, in my generation, uh, most of us, most of my friends, we knew what our name meant. Uh, our parents told us what our names meant. Um, you know, um, my parents said, you know, your name means crowned one, but do not let that go to your head. Um, <laughs> Uh, But we really believe that God is setting you apart to do and be something in life uh, that is helpful. And I remember my Sunday school teachers praying for me and saying every Sunday after class, Stephen, I've been praying with you and for you and for your parents beginning at your baptism. And so there's moments when I do take crowned one to my head and there's an error of pompousness at times, but we continue to grow through that. But there's power in names. Our daughter's name is Charis. It means grace. Jesus' name, Yeshua, means Savior. So I'm not here to make you feel bad about what your name means. Um, (laughs) You know, there's always a positive, like Jacob's name. The name Jacob is usurp, it means usurper. Well, I think there can be a positive side of that if you use your usurping positively. (laughs) The point is, your existence matters. Let me tell you a story about a name. Um, I ran across this dissertation title, Black Names in White Classrooms. Black Names in White Classrooms classrooms, teachers' experiences, and student perspectives. So there's a colon after black names in white classrooms, colon, 
teachers' experience, students' perspectives. The individual I'm now going to uh, tell you about her life, she is a coach in her profession. She is a professor, and uh, she uh, does a lot of writing on the significance of names and how, regardless of your name, you can make meaning. Uh, Her name at birth was this, it still is this, Marijuana Pepsi Van Dyke. (laughs) Marijuana Pepsi Van Dyke. Her mother said, in time, I'll help you understand the significance of those words, and I know people will make fun of it, and they will laugh at you, but you will persevere, and your life will make a difference. An even more profound difference in a positive way than people think marijuana can make a difference, or just drinking full-on sugar Pepsi with caffeine all the time. This woman went to graduate high school, went to college. Her PhD title, Black Names in White Classrooms, Teacher Perspectives, teacher experiences and perspectives. Her whole time, she was growing, lived in a predominantly white area, African American, going to school. Every day, first day of school, uh, marijuana, Pepsi, where are you? No other kid got these follow-up questions that she got. Hey, tell me about where this name came from. And one day, when you read the story of this woman's life, she actually said to the teacher, why don't you ask anybody else more about their name? Why do you only ask me about mine? The point of all this is, is that I think being named Marijuana Pepsi could be problematic and that you have to spend a lot of time explaining. But this woman is a personal coach, a professor, is highly significant in her field, and she has not changed her name because she relishes the opportunity for people to, after they've backed up from whoever this person is, and realize that Dr. Marijuana Pepsi Van Dyke is making meaning in that encounter in that syllabus, in those lectures, that her encounter with her students or those she is coaching is more than a name. That you need to get to know the person and that individual is making meaning for others. No, you all say, well, my name, I'm not going to change my name to something unique like whatever it would be. What I'm trying to tell you is who you are with your name and your character brings something to every encounter, everything you say, all the ideas you share, All that you are and bring to whatever you do in life is an opportunity to create meaning, to help shape significance and identity and purpose in one's life. Oh, Dr. Van Dyke, or as I know her now, Marijuana Pepsi, has had to work hard, right? For people to know who she is, but she is shaping people. I don't want any of you to think that you cannot make meaning. Because God is writing God's story on your life. And when you take who you are into whatever you do, the story that God is writing in your life becomes a meaning-making experience as you relate to people in whatever it is. When you yell four on the golf course, you're making meaning. How you say four on the golf course 
makes meaning. How you interact with people when your golf ball bounces off their golf cart when you see them is making meaning. Or when you answer the phone at work and what you hear is not what you want to hear, but how you respond makes meaning, clarity, interaction. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, God is making meaning in your life from the minute that you wake up until the minute you go to sleep, and God keeps you alive during the night, and when you wake up the next day, it's another opportunity to make meaning, to have significance and impact in another person's life. So here are the three things I want you to remember from the texts that were read. Hosea is very clear. The book of Hosea is very clear about how God will take us in whatever condition to write the story and to bring about meaning in life. Oh, the people of God were disobedient. The people of God were, to use the word from Hosea, whoring around. And I'm not just talking about sex. Whoring is having other priorities, other loves, and not being faithful to God, or faithful to your spouse, or faithful to the employer. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And Hosea didn't wake up one day and say, hey God, I want to be a prophet, because I want my life to make meaning. No, Hosea was a man after God's heart, and God said, uh, hey Hosea, I want you to go marry a whore. Her name is Gomer, and you're going to have children, and you're going to make meaning in the eyes and ears and hearts of the people of Israel that they are not my people, but they are my people. I want them to deal with their brokenness so they understand that I will never stop loving you. Aren't you glad for verse 10 of the verses that Penny read? I mean, that's a real downer. One kid is named not my people. One kid is named my people. And verse 10 says, after all this stuff about judgment, but all my people will be so numerous and they will be called my children. So Hosea made meaning in very tough circumstances. Gomer was brought out of tough circumstances and loved by Hosea to become something more than she ever was. So from the book of Hosea, we need to understand that meaning is made in our lives when we recognize the parts of our lives that are very broken and the parts of our lives that aren't broken and we deal with it and allow God to say, you know, that part of your life is really not my people stuff. This part of your life is my people stuff. I want you to deal with that other side and know that I'm with you always. I can only imagine marijuana Pepsi having to deal with the ridicule and the definition of herself, but the definition, definition of herself that her mother gave and integrate and understand that it's not the words, it's the person behind the words that helps people make meaning in the tough times of life. We learn from the Gospel of Luke how to pray and to always look to God for the basic things we need each and every day. And we learn at the very end of the Luke reading that we can ask God for everything and anything, and God will provide. Oh, it might not be now. It might not be tomorrow, but God will provide. Because why? God is about making meaning. Do you know that every human being wants meaning in their life? For some, it's, 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 it's like an onion where you have to peel off layer, 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 layer until you get to the core of the onion. Every human being wants their life to matter. Would you agree with me? Even when they give you that calloused, hard, I don't care. All of us want our lives to be meaningful, and we do want our lives to create meaning. I, I need you to know that 
The minute I come to the point that all of my writing or all of my sermons and all of my teachings, if I ever walk in without the enthusiasm and hope that whatever hours I've spent will not be an opportunity to create meaning, I need to stop what I do. Did you hear what I just said? Now that's not saying, oh God, pastor just gave me permission to quit my job because there's no meaning in it. <laughs> no. I think all of us need to take a long, hard work look of why there isn't meaning in what we're doing or why we're struggling in meaning in relationships or why we're struggling in meanings, meaning at our church or why we're struggling. Meaning is something that's always happening. Fair? Every encounter, every word, every move, every idea, every engagement of a relationship is an opportunity for meaning, clarity, focus, encouragement, strength, hope. I'm not talking about you signing up to be a missionary in India, although I'd like that. You don't have to be doing something exotic to find meaning in your life. How about appreciating that you're breathing, that you have a job, that you are retired, you can do leisure, you can go to church, and you can have conversations with people. That's where the meaning happens, even when you get pulled over by the CHP. That can be a meaningful engagement. It, it can, people. It's been a long time since I've been pulled over. But I remember one time, it's been two times that it's happened in my life. And the officer at the very end said this to me. Why aren't you angry that I'm giving you a ticket? Response? I'm just grateful you said I was going 75. <laughs> I think I was going 85. And to be quite honest, I deserve this. To which he said, I'm, when I get back to my car, I'm gonna write that down. I can't tell you the last time someone actually took responsibility for what they did. Now, I don't know who that guy is. I wish I was working through this theme then. I would bet that was a meaning-producing experience for him. It was for me. I have a hard time taking responsibility. I think we all do, don't we? Colossians tells us, oh man, I thought that was the baptismal bowl. <laughs> but then I realized I was on the wrong side for that. This is the liability of how I do my thing. Colossians says, we can live full lives because the one who died and was raised from the dead is alive in us by faith. We can fully live and have meaningful lives because the one who created us, the one who died for us, the one who was raised from the dead for us is alive in us by the Holy Spirit. So God has said, I've only made one of you your life can bring meaning in every encounter, in every experience that you have. So be encouraged this day. I learned a lot from marijuana Pepsi. That no circumstance is that overwhelming that you cannot make a difference. We live in fractious times like Hosea. We need to pray as Jesus prayed as he taught us in Luke. We need to know what Paul said that the wisdom of the world pales to the wisdom of God because God is alive in each one of us by faith in Christ. 
And so I leave you with this thought about the significance of creating meaning in every interaction, every discussion, every idea that you may have. I'm going to read from Christian Mission in the Modern World. We respond to our high calling as disciples of Jesus Christ to see people as our neighbors, different people as our neighbors. They are human beings created in God's image, whom God loves and for whose salvation Christ died. We strive not only to see them as neighbors, but also to obey Christ's teaching by being neighbors to them. We are called to be gentle, but not naive, to be discerning and not gullible, to be alert to whatever threats we may face, but not to be ruled by fear. Do you think we need to hear that word that we need to create a new meaning right now in our country to not be ruled by fear, but to be ruled by the unconditional love of God and help people create a new narrative, a new story, new meaning, new significance in their lives. So I'm, I, have to learn, I have to continue to learn what I'm preaching about today. So God had a meaning-producing few hours with me this week. And I hope you will consider how your life really matters and how you can make meaning because God will do it through you. Amen.